Hi guys, welcome to uh, evolution may lead to speciation. The natural selection actual uh, topic is described in uh, other video. So if you would like to look at the natural selection, have a look at the uh, uh, video on that topic. So what we will be looking here will, it will be kind of introduction. So we will be looking at the gene pool of a population and variation. So it will get started with the, uh, with the keywords. So gene pool, okay, as we can see here on the diagram, are all of the alleles, of all of the genes in the population. Natural selection will be process of identifying what skills, what values are most advantage, and there will be process of selecting them. And variation uh, will be then uh, the, uh, the obviously the process of uh, of um, of leading to the natural selection. So the variation in the phenotype will be then uh, will be then causing natural selection, which will lead to the evolution. So, population uh, is a group of organisms that, uh, uh, of the same species that occupies a specific space at a specific time that they can interbreed and, because it's not finished, and produce fertile offspring. Okay, you need to mention about fertile offspring here to get full mark. Gene pool. So there are alleles, all of the alleles of all of the genes within that population at a given time. Selection pressure, so there are factors and the environmental factors that will limit the population of the species. And they will determine the frequency of the alleles within a gene pool. Finally, the evolution is the change in the heritable characteristics of biological populations over successive generations. And they will rise to, obviously, biodiversity. So the factors that will be affecting evolution is the number of offsprings. There are generations in populations of all the species. And it's the variety of phenotypes that selection operates against. So, natural selection, how actually it is it done? So, things that will apply to natural selection is the overpopulation and it's the variation. So, as we can see here within the variation, the phenotypes, so the expression of the genotype due to environmental factors uh, could vary. So, we've got different uh, kind of colors of the shells of those snakes. What will happen in the natural selection? The ones that are less advanced will be finally at the end, at the end eliminated. So the less advantage alleles are going to decrease in the frequency. Or more advantage, those brown ones here, okay, are going to be selected. They will reproduce and they will produce fertile offspring. Uh, and doing so, they're going to increase the frequency of that specific allele in the population. So, predation, disease, and competition, okay, they are means of the survival, and they will result in that different survival in the reproduction, what we've said. So, what we've said here was that some of them are less adapt, okay, so we can look Compare, uh, refer this to the competition or to the predations. For example, those lighter ones, they could be easily seen by predators. So those organisms with phenotypes providing selective advantage are likely to produce more offspring and pass on those advantage alleles to the next generation, what we've said. So the advantage allele will increase in the frequency within the gene pool. And doing a kind of uh, looking at this, we will then uh, be able to determine the process of selection because we've got stabilizing selection, directional selection, and disruptive selection. So stabilizing selection is the one that's going to uh, make sure that the, the mean is, uh, is the allele that we're going to, um, uh, it's going to be advantage. The, uh, st uh, the directional selection, it's going to select one of the extreme values, extreme characteristics, and disruptive, it's going to obviously eliminate the mean and select both of the extreme values. 
So the evolution, obviously, is the change in the allele frequency due to selection pressures, due to the alleles being passed on, due to selection. So uh, what is then the role of overpopulation uh, of offspring in the natural selection? So this is just the example. So if we've got too many offspring and not enough the resources. So we can combine this with the topic of intraspecific competition, intra with fin the same species. So if we've got higher number of the species, will be higher competition, so more individuals will die, okay, or struggle to survive. And the privileged conditions, so for example, like better adapt to height or escape from the predators or obtain the light, whatever, those will be now the conditions that we would like to see within the individuals. So in, those individuals are going to evolve by showing those uh, characteristics. So they will survive, will be better adapt, so they will interbreed, they will pass the alleles on to the next generations, increasing the alleles frequency of more advantage characteristic. So the selection of alleles better adapt okay, to those conditions will be taking place and the selection process depends on individuals of population being genetically different from one another. So the role of the variation in the natural selection is the fact that variation may produce less suitate individuals. Variation will take place in the phenotypes will be shown in the the little individual genetic variation in population is actually beneficial because uh, it could be um, ability to uh, to adapt to changes resulting from the evolution to the climate change or even to the new disease and the larger population will have a higher chance to pass on those advantage alleles to integrate her entire offspring right so uh, one more time to just uh, put everything in the order. So we've seen overpopulation. So variation with thin those individuals will cause the uh, selection because what will happen only the more advantage alleles will be passed on the variation in the phenotype, for example, and the adaptation will be that those more advanced will reproduce, produce fertile offspring and in, uh, increase the uh, frequency of the dominant allele, uh, of the, uh, sorry, not dominant, but of the advantage allele that will let them to survive. So, the, uh, obviously, population will evolve and will adapt to new, uh, new conditions, which is obviously the influence of the variation on natural selection. So, few questions here. So, we've got uh, nine uh, subspecies of the giraffes, and they evolved when the population of giraffes were separated. So, here we need to kind of think about this. So, they were separated uh, for long time periods, and they had distinct colored skin markings. And some biologists have suggested that up to six of those subspecies should be classified as different species. But what's the definition of the species? The organism okay, that can uh, reproduce and produce fertile offspring. And explain why different subspecies of giraffe might have evolved from a common ancestor. And use the information from the passage in your answer. Separate. What the word separate actually tells you that they are no longer able to interpret. So that could be, okay, geographical isolation. Geographical isolation stops them from reproduction. So what will actually then cause genetic diversity here? Different species. The only way of getting that, it's a mutation. Okay, that will then be passed on from generation to generation, inc increasing the frequency of the alleles. Okay, so let's let's make a sense of the mark scheme then. So no interbreeding because they are separated due to geographical isolation. Mutation, it's linked to those different color markings because there are different species. So the only one way of the of that difference is the mutation. Selection, okay, 
it's linked to the markings because that's why they evolved and the 